a hi in this video i will show you how to migrate data from azure storage blob to azure storage table with using adf so in this video we will focus on hands on demo of uh, how to migrate a data from azure storage blob so here we are storing csv file as a blob into the azure storage containers and then you know we're going to build a um, azure data factory based data pipeline uh, which will help us to migrate this CSV data, which is basically semi-structured data into a structured uh, storage that is Azure storage table. So here, um, you know, this demo is purely focusing on how you can construct an ADF pipeline, which is basically a data pipeline or ETL pipeline, which can extract your raw data, which is semi-structured raw data, CSV file, or in, in Azure terminology, they call it as a storage blob. Now convert that data and store it into uh, Azure storage table, which is a structured data by the way, right? And uh, this can be achieved with using the data pipeline. So I'm gonna show you here from scratch to end. Now, this is my Azure subscription. Uh, in this one, I have a storage account. In this storage account, I have a container um, and that container contains the um, raw data that is a CSE files. Um, so that is sitting on, in the container called test ADF. And if I show you the raw sample data, that is uh, CSV data, uh, it contains the data in this format. Uh, that is something, you know, an example CSV file. Now we want to take this data, take all the data that is present in these all files uh, and store it into a table that is Azure um, storage table with using data pipeline dynamically, right? So now this is our sync. Uh, with respect to the ADF pipeline, um, you know, terminology. Now I'm going to show you my, um, you know, the, uh, this is basically source. Now we're going to see the sync as well. So sync is again, my uh, storage table. So again, I will go back to the same storage account. So this is the storage account and we're going to create a table here that is uh, storage table. Let me call it as a test table um, demo. So I'm going to construct a storage account table something like this right so with that being said so we have the uh, source in the containers and now our sync is basically a storage account table which is belongs to the same storage account you can keep it in a different storage account remember that um, you know it should be uh, it should be within the same tenant so that's what i can say for now so what we do is now we go to the uh, you know now we go to the adf Right, so I have created an Azure Data Factory instances in this subscription. So if I open my resource group, you will find an ADF. So this is my Azure Data Factory version two. It is a service which will help you to build the ATL pipeline um, for your data migration or for your data engineering. So when I open the services, there is a launch studio. So when I click on this launch studio, it will open uh, into the another tab where it will give me a studio where I can construct the data pipeline. Uh, so here, this is how the studio looks like. Now, what we do is, you know, we're going to go ahead and try to build a new pipeline. So there is a button called new. Uh, in this one, you can directly go ahead and click on a pipeline. So when you click on a pipeline, so this is how it looks like. So here you can give a name to your pipeline. So for now, we give it the pipeline name as blob to uh, table, um, you know, the data, uh, data. Let me call it as a blob to table ETL for now. So this is my um, data pipeline name. Now in the activities, so basically Azure Data Pipelines provides you a list of inbuilt activity which is can be used in the ETL data pipeline, right? So in that one, we go for the move and transfer. So here the pipeline that we're building is to move the data from source to sync, right? So for that case, I'm gonna use the copy data uh, you know the activity which is you know built-in activity of the data pipeline so when i copy paste that or basically drag and drop that uh, particular uh, you know option here in this particular uh, whiteboard so it will give me the um, up, you know configuration something like this so when you when you select this copy data um, so this copy data uh, activity has a lot of uh, properties in it which has the a general property and then uh, it has a source and sync configuration and all so we're going to see how to write those source and sync right and, and then we're going to run the pipeline 
So let me give the name as blob to our table. So let me give it a right name that is blob to table. Okay, now with that said, you can always uh, go through the general properties. So far now, general properties all are good. Uh, let me go to the next property that is source. So here, as I showed you, our source is basically a blob source or basically Azure storage table blob. So that is our um, source. Now what I do is you know, I'm going to click on source data set, click on new. And in this one, you go to the Azure uh, option uh, and then click on uh, Azure storage blob. So here we're going to choose the Azure blob storage. And then in that one, uh, within that um, Azure blob storage, uh, it will support these many uh, different format of file. For now, we are interested on a CSV file, which is highly used, commonly used uh, file. And then we're going to go to the, so basically here you can also give the, you know, your own name, but for now, let me give it as a delimited text one. And then it needs to have us, you know, linked services. Linked services in the Azure Data Factory is basically a connection configuration. So here our source is Azure Blob Storage. So to connect to that Azure Blob Storage, you know, you need to have a linked services. So we're going to create a linked services here dynamically. Click on a new and then it will take you to the option something like this that is blob storage. And here you can always, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, change your um, authentication type according to your need. So for now, I'm going to go ahead with the service principle, um, you know, which is uh, which I have in my case. Uh, we can go ahead with it or uh, with that, you know, let me go to the next option. That is uh, basically if you see here, I have chosen the service principle. What does that mean is basically I have an SPN and that SPN has the client ID and secret. So we're going to use that uh, to authenticate or basically we're going to use that to construct this new linked services configuration. So I have chosen that then in the account selection method. So we're going to use the, uh, so, you know, we're going to use this particular subscription in that subscription. When you choose that particular subscription, it's going to take you to the storage account. So if I show you here, so this is the storage account. It is automatically listing. And in fact, that is the storage account where we have the, uh, you know, the source data. Now, with that said, you know, it will automatically list out your tenant. And then after that, you have to provide your service principal ID and the service principal key. So both I have already copied in my notepad plus plus. So I'm going to copy that. So this is my secret, by the way. So I have an SPN and uh, that SPN has a client ID and secret, which we're going to use it to build the pipeline. So here, this is the secret. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to give the principal um, key basically here. So let me use the uh, Azure public. And then here is the is the service principal key, right? So we're gonna use the service principal key here and the principal ID. So the, my principal ID is this one that is client ID. And then yeah, that's also basically it is asking you ID, client ID, and secret. So that's what we are copy pasting here to here. And uh, note that the SPN I have created, right? And the client ID and the secret that I'm pasting here. You know that SPN has the contributor access or basically blob contributor access, right? And uh, that's the reason it is able to do the job, right? So make sure that that SPN has the blob contributor access on your storage account. Now in the cloud type, you're gonna use Azure uh, Azure uh, uh, public cloud type, and then with that configuration, you can directly click on our test connections. So test connection is basically just to make sure that you know the whatever you have provided are accurate. So we're going to create the uh, connection with that uh, uh, said because the connection was successful uh, in the container. So my container where my CSC file where present is, is, you know, test ADF. So let me copy that uh, test ADF and uh, we're going to use that in the pipeline build. So here you're going to put your container uh, called test ADF in my case. And then rest all option is, is, is okay. And just click on okay. Now, just to validate it, it you can always uh, do a preview data. Preview data is an inbuilt capability of this particular uh, activity where you can, uh, on the flow itself, you can always uh, view this, uh, you know, view the preview of the data of the CSC file. So basically, it looks like it is previewing because uh, we, what does that mean is, you know, basically our source is working as expected. Now, in the file path, you know, uh, since we are giving to the container, so I would suggest you to go for the wildcard path so when you select on a wildcard path so this is how it will uh, take it so what is that wildcard path is basically it will extract the data present in the all csc file present under the container called test adf and then it will use the same to 
to to put it in a sync right so with that option said you know rest all option is we are all good let's go to the next option that is sync now what is our sync so sync that is basically this is our sync that is the uh, storage account table so my storage account table has uh, you know this https url so let me copy that right and then click on a new here as well now go to the azure and here you know you're going to choose the uh, table so here you should have a um, you know one more option called azure table storage so we're going to uh, select that and then click on a linked services again so when you click on a linked services it will give you the template where it will create a linked services for that kind of uh, you know the uh, uh, sync so in this method i'm going to go with the account key for now uh, in the in the in the account selection method use the uh, azure subscription when you choose the subscription it will automatically list the storage account choose that so choose the storage account where your table is is sitting right so with that option i think um, by default it should be good and uh, click on a, a test connection so here we have chosen the account key so basically that's the reason it will automatically use the account key uh, with that said you know the connection was successful so you can click on a create to um, complete that linked services creation and uh, when you choose that linked services it will automatically list the possible tables underneath that so here um, you know it is showing you the two tables which you can also see from here that is uh, a test table demo and uh, the other one so here we are interested to put it under the table of our interest that is test table demo uh, either you can also enter the manual so with that said you know uh, all the sync properties are completed now click on ok and it will take you to this page that is a sync you see that this is the sync data set is basically azure table and in the insert type so what is that insert type so there are a lot of insert types so basically merge is basically um, a very suggested method why because merge will actually uh, does the you know it will do the append job it will not delete okay or you can always uh, explore the the replace as well uh, based on your demand for now i would suggest you to go with the insert type equal to merge and then the partition key so remember that when you oh, when you have the uh, when you have the uh, uh, the sync called azure storage table the azure storage table comes with the you know the default column name called uh, you know the partition key and a row key remember that partition key row key and timestamp are the default columns of the azure storage table now what is that value it gonna put it that is what the configuration is suggesting here so it says that you know the partition key value so here partition key value you can use the sync column name and you try to put the sync column name here so add dynamic content so that is basically you can search the uh, you know the system variables functions or variables so basically here um, uh, you can use the sync columns uh, or you can specify the partition value so basically uh, specify the partition value or you can use the uh, uh, you know right now let's go with the uh, sync partition value and you can give the default uh, partition value something like say say blob yeah say like blob uh, uh, blob csvs so let me give the uh, default partition key value equal to uh, blob csv for now and uh, row key so remember that row key is a unique I you know unique uh, uh, identifier in the row of the table so that's the reason it should be unique identifier and rest all option you can keep it default so with that said you know um, you have uh, configured the uh, you know the data pipeline as expected now you can do a publish so here if everything is good it will come into a green and click on a publish so what is that publish is nothing but you know you have now coded the your data pipeline and now you are publishing that pipeline into this particular azure data factory so that it will build the pipeline and that pipeline can use it for run purpose right so with that said you know you can go back to the home again now you see that your uh, blob to table etl pipeline is ready now once the blob to etl pipeline is ready so here you click on that again and uh, if you go here there is a there is a button called add trigger now you can click on a add trigger now so when you click on a trigger now basically it will create or it will run the instance of blob to table etl pipeline what does that mean is basically it will run the pipeline now so you can see that pipeline uh, status right now uh, like this so if you go to the there is a button called there is an option in the left hand side called monitor uh, click on the pipeline runs and uh, this is the instance of pipeline which is running 
now looks like you know it says that pipeline is succeeded and you can also um, check the status or basically logs of the particular pipeline by clicking on this particular spec one and this is how it will show you now we can as i as we have we are aware of the files that were present and data that were present in the in the source side now we are expecting that that data is now converted into a table and it is stored in the in the sync side now let's try to explore that table and check if the data are already there earlier there were no data under this table okay so let me go back to the uh, back to the storage browser here um, let me go to the event and go to the storage browser now we go to the uh, storage table so our table is this one now here we go so here you see that the data that were present in that csv file is now migrated and stored in this particular table now you can ignore the row key as i said it is a unique identifier so the adf has a mechanism that it will you know it will generate an unique id per row and try to insert it and timestamp is basically you know the time in which this record is been inserted and then of course the other csv data so we had a, a, a name column we had an age so you can ignore the you know there were some errors uh, which were uh, mismatching but basically that is happening because my csv files were not proper uh, in the real production environment i believe that adf pipeline uh, the the source data will be in a proper uh, you know format and, and you henceforth you know you should not be able to see this kind of mismatches so far now we were able to convert or we were able to migrate the 25 records or the records that were present in the all these five files are now migrated and put it across into uh, the azure storage table all right so with that note you know i have uh, shown you the things need to be shown in this video that is how to migrate the data from azure blob storage to azure table storage uh, with using adf pipeline and this can this can be scheduled as well so with that note, thank you very much for watching my videos. Can request please subscribe my channel. That would really encourage me a lot. With that note, thank you. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.